Hi everyone, so we're going to talk about the new features available in Entity Framework 7 for bulk updates and bulk leads. This is great for improving performance because before it wastes a lot of memory and now it's very easy and you don't require any extensions to do it. So let's check it out and see how we can take advantage of these new features. First, I'm going to explain you the data that I have. I have a data set here, of course, a fake data set with like a million cars in it. It has a million records with plate, it's active, gear, and the ID. It works. And I'm going to make an update in the old way so we can understand where the issues are and why we should implement the new way that it's available in Entity Framework 7. So here I have my bar cars to update, or let's put it as old cars. And we will have database context cars where gear it's less than 2002 is that well it depends the old depends on this on the perspective okay i have all the cars that are that who, who the, with a year less than 2002 and i want to update those so i do a little for each bar car in old cars and I said that the car is active, I set it to false. I want to set all the older cars to false in, and to not active anymore. So once I do that, eh, everything is being tracked. So every change that I do on my entities can be applied to the database by calling database context save changes. So what will happen here? First, I'm going to load every single entity because I need it for the for each. The for each will make this iQueryable to, to run directly on the database and get the data. So I will have all the cars in this variable in memory. I will have I will have everything in memory. So then I run through every single thing that's in there and I update the track entity so I can have an update statement. If we run this, we will see a huge query. It will run a huge update statement. Well, not one update, a lot of updates. For every single tracked entity, it will run an update query. Maybe in set, but who cares? It will be a lot in any way. So I'm going to do dot net run. And as you can see, it's make it ma it made the select, and then it's running a lot of a lot of update, update, up, update where, update where. So if I close here, well, we can see uh, update blah 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 blah. It's doing a lot of stuff. And it should be, it can be improved a lot if we have bulk functionalities. So that's what Entity Framework 7 is providing us. Let's see how we can implement that. So it's it, we can keep our word statement the same way. We just have our, our word statement. And right here, we have an equable that hasn't been compiled. So it lets you add some stuff that can help Entity Framework to understand what you want to do. And something that we want to do is use the new function called execute update which also has an async version to it if you want to run it asynchronous, asynchronously and okay i just take here my my entity and i said set property p uh, p is active well let's see let's put it c i think i like c better it's active, which is the property that I want to update. And then I set the, the value which I want to update to. So I will just discard this and set it to false. So this should do it. Let's see what's the query that's being run when I execute this. And you will see the difference. So I do my worst statement and then I execute an update on the property is active, setting it to false. Let's execute this. So as you can see, this is what happens. A normal common update set is active to false from cars where the year is less than 2002. It's a lot less, a lot less code inside our database, a lot less transactions. It runs directly and you don't need to do anything else. And yeah, let's see if it runs because I'm, I'm, I'm also not sure if I need to run the save changes. Let's see what happens. So if I take from here and I do where gear is less than 2002, let me put the, so yeah, it seems like the update already run because the other, the other one didn't commit. So yeah, let's, let's do, let's roll back our transaction to see what happens. 
So if I say to true, and I will extend, well, I'm not, I'm not extending red range because it will not do anything. I will run it. Pop, already done. Let's see if it executed. As you can see, now everything is active. How much the, did it took? Nothing. It's really quick. And the same applies to the, to the update. Let me show you. If I go here, now I can do also, I want, you know what? I don't want to set everything as inactive. I just want to delete it. So I just do an execute delete. And what will happen is that all that data will be gone. And we'll make a simple delete from where. And it's just that simple. Let's try it out. That's it. You see how quick it was? Before I needed to do the same thing. It's 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 easy because I could do like what? I just take the obvious context, the uh, remove range, and then send this. But let's see what's generated when I do this. I just take this and just close here. And now I need to call the save changes async. So we generate the query and apply it to the database. The database context, save changes async. No, let's save changes, sorry. I'm used to asynchronous methods. <laughs> Here I'm using a console application. So if we run this, let's see what happens. Ah, nothing happened because I already deleted the data, but let's let's just set it out to 2005. So now, look. Look that delete. How much it's taking. It's a lot. It's a big difference. Like that's why we should use the new the new functionalities it's great for 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 when you need to save performance and you need to save memory in most of the cases this works perfectly whenever wherever you have an, a a, word, a complex word statement or wow imagine this with a complex word statement uh, like oh that that's the thing but as you can see it finishes and it and it does it that does the same thing but not as quick and, and memory saving than the other option. So I think that's it and that covers it up. I hope you like it and I hope that you can test these new features that are going to be available with .NET 7 and Entity Framework 7. Try them out, it's great. And we'll see you in the next, in the next video. There you have it. Without any extension, you can do quick updates to a huge set of data. It's really cool and it's easier than before. So yeah, I hope you can try it out and find the real deal behind the new features inside Entity Framework 7. Have a really good day and see you later. Ah, for, uh, I, for, I almost forgot. Don't forget to press the like button if you like this video, comment if you want to see something else or if you want to, to have an opinion about how this works and don't forget to check our older videos. We have a lot and we will be pulling more videos. So subscribe and you will have me and see me with new features all the time. Bye bye. <laughs>